Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. In fact, good morning, because it's not known yet. Uh, my name is Khaldun Azhari. I'm a former president, and I have the honor to moderate this event today. Uh, our uh, main speakers uh, from my right side is Mr. Uh, Hiroki Kawai, and to his right is Mr. Yuichi Kaido. They are co-chairs of the National Associations of Lawyers for Nuclear Power Free Japan. And uh, at their right, uh, uh, at uh, Mr. Uh, Kaido right, is Ms. Ms. Yui Kimura. She's Secretary General of this, uh, uh, of TEPCO shareholders, derivative lawsuit. And today we will, they will talk about uh, the legal battle that is uh, continue over TEPCO and Fukushima nuclear disaster uh, cause. And uh, we all know that uh, uh, there are many lawsuits and uh, rulings by uh, uh, by the Supreme Court and Tokyo District Court over the responsibility who is responsible for the tsunami uh, for the uh, for the shutdown of uh, the I mean for for the uh, br break up of the power emergency generators that uh, caused uh, the temperature in the reactors uh, to cause melting of the nuclear uh, power uh, fuel and uh, this cause is still going on and raging and there are a lot of uh, compensation ordered by the court and the team here will explain to us uh, latest details about that and we we will have mr K uh, mr kaido and miss kimura talk about uh, the issue they will provide some presentations followed by q and a and uh, mr kawai will also be ready to answer some questions if, if you have here on the room or online, we have many people watching us online. And the uh, session is, uh, our press conference today is for one hour, and they will speak about half an hour, and then that will be followed by a Q&A. Thank you very much, please, Mr. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, today I will tell you about the Tokyo District Court verdict on TEPCO shareholder case. On uh, 13th July, the Tokyo District Court ordered the four former executives of the TEPCO to pay uh, 13 trillion yen, 100 billion dollars, uh, to the company for damages caused by the disaster at Fukushima number one nuclear power plant, following March uh, 11, three reactor meltdowns. This amount is believed to be the largest ever awarded by the court for civil lawsuits. Uh, presiding Judge Yoshihide Asakura uh, ruled the, the four failed in their duty as TEPCO directors to promptly uh, order urgent tsunami countermeasure. He said uh, the possibility of the major tsunami related accident could have been avoided if measures to prevent flooding has, had been taken. Shareholder can sue the uh, corporation executive representing the corporation. If the shareholder prepaid, damage will be paid to the corporation, uh, not to the shareholder. And defendant Muto rejected the proposal by TEPCO Civil Engineering Group which had advised implementation of tsunami countermeasure in July 2008 and asked the Japan Society of Civil Engineers to evaluate the tsunami. Uh, that is a Muto decision. And no action was taken for several years until that evaluation was finalized. And that is inaction in this case. The, the court found that although Muto decision was suspected of being a and this unreasonable postponement of the countermeasures, it could be barely be considered reasonable. But the inaction in this case would have left the reactor in a state where uh, it was unable to cope with a natural disaster, and inaction is to totally unacceptable. He also pointed out that Kita, uh, Katsumata Shimizu Takeguro, who approved of the inaction, a fundamentally lack of safety awareness and sense of responsibility. The 20 trillion yen uh, sought by the plaintiffs is totally amount 
listed in a December 2016 report by Joint Committee by TEPCO and the uh, Economy Ministry. Uh, the report said TEPCO could need spend eight trillion to, uh, to the commission, uh, eight trillion to compensate the victims, and six trillion is needed for the decontamination. Uh, this is the content of the 30 trillion yen compensation money. Uh, sorry, this is uh, only Japanese. On March uh, 2011, the great earthquake occurred, causing the total loss of power, submerging of the emergency diesel power system, and series of the meltdown in Unit 1, 2, 3. In July uh, 2002, National Headquarters for Earthquake Research Promotion raised the issue in its long-term assessment that the consensus of leading earthquake and tsunami scientists acknowledged the three major tsunami causing the earthquake exceeding a magnitude eight to have occurred in the past 400 four years along the Japan Trench between the Tohoku region and the Boso coast including the offshore of the Fukushima Daiichi. Uh, they published the forecast in 2002 that it would repeat in the future. As stipulated in the company's acts, shareholders can launch a derivative lawsuit to pursue the responsibility of company board member and others when their action or failure to act have caused the company damage. When the plaintiff's claim is accepted in such a lawsuit, damage are paid to the company, not to the shareholder. The main issue of the contention is in this verdict centered on the credibility of the long-term government assessment. The former head of the Volcano and Earthquake Department of the Japan Meteorological Eye Agency, who was also a member of the Long-Term Assessment Subcommittee, testified that clearly that the long-term assessment was highly reliable. In his testimony, he introduced a lecture by Hiroo Kanamori, a world-renowned seismologist and former chairperson of the Seismological Society of America, who predated the tsunami earthquake off the coast of Fukushima immediately after the Sumatra earthquake and the tsunami. Uh, meanwhile, the Yukinobu Okamura, who was a member of the NISA's uh, Safety Review Committee, while working on a tsunami deposit at the government established research institute, told the TEPCO official who said that uh, they wanted to continue the tsunami deposit survey. The scale of the Jogan tsunami uh, thousand years ago uh, will never de decrease, even if you continue the survey. Continuing the survey is of no further use. You should start countermeasures work right now. Uh, these two important testimony made a strong point on, on this verdict. Uh, furthermore, Atsu Watanabe and Masashi Goto, former Toshiba nuclear power plant engineer, testified in that the waterproofing and the sea walls to prevent tsunami inundation uh, were technically easy to implement, and that such countermeasures could have been implemented by the time of the accident. Uh, judge questioned for TEPCO executive harshly about their failure to uh, take tsunami countermeasure. We have asked the judge to visit the site, uh, the Tokyo District Court judge visited Fukushima uh, site in October 2021. Uh, uh, this is the first time that the judge visited the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant site. Uh, judge said, I would like to see the location of the nuclear power plant uh, first hand before making the decision on the responsibility for the accident. Uh, this is appendix. This is the presentation for Q&A ses sessions. Uh, the conclusion. 
Uh, despite the acquittal, the facts and the evidence uncovered by the criminal trial provided the much of the basis of for High Court decision in favor of the plaintiffs in Nariwai, Chiba, and Ehime civil lawsuits in which the government was found liable. On June 17, 2022, uh, the Supreme Court dismissed the state compensation claim against the government, holding that even if tsunami countermeasures were to be implemented, <laughs> there was no possibility that measures other than building a big sea wall could have been conceived. And it was impossible to take measures such as water sealing, waterproofing. Uh, Court-appointed lawyers acting as a prosecutor appealed the two, uh, 2019 decision, and, ru and uh, ruling on the appeal is expected to be handed down in January uh, next year. Uh, July 13 shareholder case's verdict would have a strong impact uh, on TEPCO criminal case and other TEPCO and state compensation case by Fukushima and the neighboring uh, residents and evacuees. Uh, thank you for your attention. Kibuno san, please. And uh, our interpreter, Ms. Mary Joyce, will help us understand her Japanese and, and translate to English. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. My name is Kimura Yui. え、昭和天皇が亡くなった記事に隠されてしまいましたが、福島第二原発3号機の開店版脱落事故が起きました。福島県新潟県に原発を押し付けて首都圏の倉敷が成り立っていることを知り、東電の株主になって株主総会などで
3.11 福島原発事故を引き起こした東電旧取締役5名に対して損害額22兆円を支払うよう訴えました被告5名が全館注意義務を果たさなかったと認定されたものの小森昭夫被告は取締役就任の時期が遅かったため防潮堤や水密化の対策には加われなかったと賠償を免除され勝俣恒久、清水正隆、武藤栄、武黒一郎の4名に対して、13兆3210億円を東電に支払うよう命じました。つまり私たち原告は、旧,旧取締役を訴えて、11年の歳月を訴訟に費やしましたが、1円も受け取ることはありません。株主に支払われるといった誤った報道が一部にありますので、お伝えしておきます。And so, this particular case was brought against five former TEPCO executives who caused the March 11 Fukushima nuclear disaster, demanding that they pay 22 trillion yen in damages. Although the five defendants were found to have failed in their duty of care, one of, care, one of the defendants, Akio Komori, was exempted from compensation on the grounds that he was not involved in the seawall and waterproofing measures due to his late appointment as a director. And so the other four, uh, Katsumata Tsunehisa, Shimizu Masataka, Muto Sakae, and Takeguro Ichiro, were ordered to pay TEPCO 13.321 trillion yen. In other words, we, the plaintiffs, spent 11 years in litigation against the former executives, but we will not receive a single yen.、Uh, there had been some erroneous media reporting that the payment would be made to the shareholders,、uh, so I am making this point to clarify. 次にこの決定が画期的であることをいくつか述べたいと思います。一つに、国の水本・地震調査研究推進本部ですが、の長期評価が専門家集団による最高の知見であったと認定されたこと、水本の評価は取るに足らないと言い放った武藤被告に対して、裁判長は、まるで水本がバカみたいじゃないですかと発言。And so, next, I would like to mention a few of the points which make this、uh, recent verdict particularly groundbreaking.、Uh, the first is the finding that the long term evaluation,、uh, which was provided by the government's headquarters for earthquake research promotion, or known as Suihon in Japanese,、uh, was indeed、uh, the best quality of finding by a group of experts. When the defendant, Muto, Mr. Muto, said that the evaluation of the headquarters was inconsequential, the presiding judge said in response to him, Well, you make it sound as if the headquarters is stupid. しし And next,、uh, the fact that the once decided tsunami countermeasures were cancelled by requesting the Japan Society of Civil Engineers to reconsider their decision.、Uh, this is something which the presiding judge referred to as the Muto decision. And the fact that no action was taken in regards to this. When in the trial this was being discussed, the presiding judge asked Mr. Muto, So you did nothing? And he continued his interrogation in this way. 3つ目に、6月17日に最高裁判決が出されましたが、この,この最高裁判決で、後知恵と打起された水密化について、日本原電や中部電力で実施された津波対策に、防潮堤同様組み込まれており、東電と日本原電の担当者同士情報は共有されていたと認定されました。And the next point, there was also a recent decision in the Supreme Court on June the 17th,、uh, which said that the、uh, information about the waterproofing and so on was something that could be said in hindsight. However, it made clear that just as the、uh, waterproofing measures which were implemented by Nihon Genden or the Japan Atomic Power Company and Chubu Electric Power Company, as well as the seawalls, it was found that this information was actually already included and had been shared between personnel at both Nihon Genden, the Japan Apo- Atomic Power Company, and TEPCO at the time. Yotsume, 現地は
、取水・排水のため、20メートル掘り下げられた地盤であり、原発に適していない立地であることを実感したのだと思います。And the, first, the fourth point is that the judge in this case was actually the first judge to go on site of the Fukushima nuclear power plant and conduct a、uh, on site survey. I believe that this allowed him to really directly experience or feel the situation there, such as the fact that the ground at the site had been dug down 20 meters for the purpose of water intake and drainage, and therefore that the site was not suitable for location of a nuclear power plant. And it's many. 日本の法廷での承認や被告への尋問はあらかじめ質問を通告しますので答弁を練習して臨みますしかし裁判官による尋問は事前に知らされていないため言葉に詰まったり思わぬ本音が出てしまったりしますこの訴訟,はこそこの訴訟では3人の裁判官がすべての被告人に対して詳細な質問をし被告たちの不作為を浮き彫りにしました特に武藤被告への尋問は47分間にも及びました。And the fifth point is that in the courts in Japan, witnesses and defendants are notified of the questions in advance so that they can practice their answers.、Uh, however, the content of questioning by the judges is not notified in advance. So this means that such a situation can、uh, make people find themselves at a loss for words or unexpectedly expressing their, their real views in a way that perhaps they had not planned. And in this case, the three judges、uh, asked very detailed questions of all of the defendants, which very much highlighted or brought to light their inaction. In particular, the questioning of defendant Mr. Muto lasted for 47 minutes. The last one is the first one. The first 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 one is the f i r 3.11 の際、女性の地位が高い国は原発がないのではないかと疑問を持ち調べたからです。日本の女性の地位はずっと下位のままです。俯瞰的に全体を見,見渡すことに優れ、命を育む女性は未来のない原発とは相入れないものです。政治はもちろんですが、経済分野でも決定権がある。地位の半数を女性にすることが脱原発への近道だと私は信じています。以上です。And in conclusion, I would also like to mention that at the general meetings of shareholders of TEPCO, we made the proposals not only to phase out nuclear power, but also to increase the number of female directors and managers to half of the overall or the total number. And the reason for this is because at the time of the March 11 disaster, we were wondering and also researching about whether countries where women have a higher status do not have nuclear power plants, actually.、Uh, the status of women in Japan has always remained low or continues to remain low. However, women excel at looking at the whole picture from a more holistic perspective and nurturing life, which are facts which are incompatible with nuclear power plants, which are things which have no future. Therefore, I believe that a way to achieve a nuclear power phase out sooner is to have women in half of all decision making positions in politics as well as in the economic sphere. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to give the floor to Mr.、Uh, Kawai. He has some、uh, presentation about the very big、uh, file he has. Thank you. Please go ahead. Uh, これが判決の原本です。本当の原本です。Uh, so、hello,、えー、I am also attorney、uh, Kawai, and this is the original verdict from the court case, actually.、えー、これは六百三十、六百三十六ページ、えー、あります。五、えー、キロ近いんじゃないかと思います。It is 636 pages and I think close to a weight of 5 kilograms. これだけ詳しい判決は、えー、原発関係の中でもなかったと思います。I think that this is probably the most detailed verdict which has been issued in cases related to nuclear power until now.、えー、ここに裁判官の署名があります。It also has the signatures of the judges here.、Uh, please feel free to take a photograph of them.
これだけを見ても、裁判官がいかに熱心にこの,判あの裁判に取り組んだか分かると思います。And I think by looking at this verdict, you can see just how、uh, dedicated or serious indeed the judges were in their application to this particular trial. この判決の思想的な背景、一番重要な、uh, 認識はあの次のようなものです。And within this verdict, I would like to introduce one particular part which is very much at the core of the most important thinking behind the verdict. 原発事故は我が国そのものの崩壊にもつながりかねないということをはっきりと84ページで言っています。On page 84 of the verdict, it states very clearly that nuclear power plant disasters could lead to the collapse of Japan itself. 他の原発任用判決のとの違いはここにあります。And I think this is where the difference with this particular verdict and other verdicts in cases related to nuclear power lies. And this is, for example, if we compare it to the verdict from the first trial of the criminal case against、uh, TEPCO, or also the state compensation case where the verdict was issued at the Supreme Court recently,、uh, we can see that there is a clear difference in the, that the recognition of the severity of what a nuclear power plant disaster is, and particularly this nuclear power plant, was very much、uh, insufficient in these cases. この600数十ページの判決の中には、裁判官の正義感と怒りがあふれています。These pages, more than、uh, 600 pages, are full of showing both the sense of justice but also the anger of the judges. その正義感及び怒りとは次のようなものです。すなわち、超危険なものの責任者なのに、あまりにこの人たちは無責任だということです。And the justice or the sense of justice and also of anger which comes out in these pages very much comes down to, despite the fact that these were the people responsible for such incredibly dangerous、uh, things, they were completely irresponsible in, in regards to them. ところで、この十三兆円という、十三兆円強という損害賠償額ですが、えー世界日本の歴史の中では最大です。しかし、世界で最大かどうかは私は確信がありませんが、多分世界記録だと思います。もし、いや、もっと高い判決が出てるよという例があれば、ぜひ外国人記者の方に教えていただきたいと思います。<笑> And the compensation amount which was、uh, declared in this verdict, that is、uh, 13 plus trillion yen, or close to 100 billion US dollars.、Uh, certainly, in the history of cases in Japan, this is the highest amount which has been issued. However,、uh, internationally, I'm not aware if this is indeed the highest amount or if this would be a world record as well. So, I would like to ask if any of the Uh, correspondents are aware of any higher cases around the world. I would be very much interested to learn about that information also. Thank you very much for the presentation. I would like to open the floor、uh, for QA. Please, if you have any question, please raise your hand and proceed to the front mic.、Uh, first question. I would like to take the first question, please. All right, Sarah. Okay, they will bring the mic. あのマイネームスマイネームスサラヤマサキヤマサキサラトシコと申しまして
、えー、今はフリーランスなんですけれどもアクセスブルワールドドットネットという今は車椅子など体の不自由な人のためのあのウェブサイトを運営しております。あの実は、えー、事故から2日後にやはりえっとカイド先生とあの木村正史さんがあの外国特派協会で古い電気ビルの方で記者会見をされた時に私も最前列でたくさん質問しましたけれどその時外国人記者の最もあの2日目であの衝撃だったのはメルトダウンをしているんですか原発は爆発するんですか核爆発ですかっていうようなねあの質問が多かったんですけれどあの時点では全く様子が分かれてないという。状況の時から今日まで私は不勉強ながらも先生方の訴訟その他あの民事とか刑事事件たくさん起こされましたけどそれら拝見してまいりまして今日このような画期的なあの異例の,あの判決の解説をしていただいてえたくさんのことを学ばせていただいたので長いあの法廷闘争でしたけどよくここまでやってこられたと思って本当に敬服しますしありがとうございました。でまずあの先生のあ、オッケー、オッケー。あ大丈夫ですあの続けてください。いいですか。オッケー。あれ。先ほどのあのまずあのえー、っと河合先生のご質問なんですけれども、日本で調べてみましたけれども、まあたくさんあの訴訟あの高額訴訟が命じられた。株主代表訴訟ありますけれども確かに、えっと、今回のが、まあ、異例中の異例の高額訴訟ですが外国の件に関してですけれどもえ裁判上の手続きにおいて一度に確定した賠償の、えー、最高額というのはイギリスの石油大手であるブリシッシュ・ペトロリアム BP 社が2010年4月にメキシコ湾で起こした大規模原油流出事故の、えーそれに対しての BP と沿岸の政府と自治体との訴訟和解賠償金としての総額が208億ドル、えー、日本円で、まあ、当時の換算で2兆5000億円だというのを考えただけでもこれも異例な国際的にも非常に注目されるべき金額だと思いますけれども私の前置き長くなりましたが私の質問は。あの先生方にあのお答えいただきたいんですけれどもあの国売で6月17日にまあ否定されたまあそれは河合先生の解説によりますと勉強不足だということ怒りがないということで今回のこの判決があのこのような結果に異例の結果になって勝訴したというのはやはりよく勉強したその裁判官の人間としての。AI とか機械とかマシンじゃなくて人間としての判断が非常に大きかったあのヒューマンな非常にヒューマニタリアンな判決だったということですけれどもあのこ,の違いにこの違いについてもう少し詳しくあの判決が明暗を分けたコントラストについてもう少し詳しく伺いたいと思いました。Um, and I have been following since even two days after the disaster when Mr. Kawai and so on gave a press conference at the former venue of FCCJ. And at the time, most of the correspondents were most concerned about, of course, whether a meltdown was already occurring, if there would be an explosion on the site. And there was very little known at the time. So I've continued to follow all of your efforts in the various lawsuits and、uh, movements and so on. So, first of all, thank you for the、uh, detailed explanation about this groundbreaking ver-、uh, verdict at the time, which I learned a great amount from. And I'd like to express respect and thanks in regards to. To that.、Um, Mr. Kawai, you mentioned about, at least within Japan, this is perhaps the highest amount of compensation、uh, decided upon in a shareholder's case,、uh, and this amount being particularly high. I looked up some figures, for example, of cases in other parts of the world, and one of the highest was a case against British Petroleum or BP in the United Kingdom in April of 2010 in regards to the oil spill off the Mexican Gulf. And at that time, it was a 28 billion US dollars, which Calculated into Japanese yen would be about 2 trillion yen. So we can see that the 13 trillion, which was、uh, declared in this verdict, is indeed something of a very、uh, high, a very large amount as well. And my question is you touched briefly upon the difference between the verdict. Of the state compensation case, which was issued on June the 17th, and this particular shareholder's case as well. And the success in this verdict are、uh, coming down to perhaps the deeper understanding of the judge in regards to this and also his 
deep uh, studying of the situation, but also the fact that this verdict was very much issued from a humanitarian perspective, or it could be said as a very human verdict on the part of the judges as well. I wonder if you could explain a little bit more about what you see about the difference of this particular verdict and its significance. Thank you. あの、ああいう判決になったんだと。um, I think that the presiding judge, Mr. Akakura, and the other two judges who were involved uh, in this uh, suit, they were not from the beginning already harboring any kind of anger or anything against uh, the defendants such as Mr. Katsumata and Mr. Takaguro. I think that it was in the process of the questioning during the trial and hearing the different excuses that were coming back and also hearing the different testimonies uh, that were shared by witnesses at the trial, which really led them to, to feel how irresponsible the executives of TEPCO were in, in their inaction and in the responses which were coming within the uh, trial proceedings as well. So therefore, I don't think that it could be said that they were already having some kind of you know, stereotype way of looking at TEPCO or any kind of pre-decision already being made, but rather it was hearing the executives directly in their responses and so on that led them to have this kind of anger about what irresponsible people indeed they were about this, and that was le what led to them uh, writing this verdict. あの、私からもお伝えさせてください。あの、高裁の え、自分の考えに基づいて質問をする to add on to this as well, uh, Mr. Asakura, the presiding judge, he was someone who formerly within the High Court had been the head of the uh, civil court proceedings there. He had also been uh, sent to work within the cabinet office within the government for a period of time as well. So we could see that he's very much an elite within the system in Japan. Uh, so actually, initially, I would say that we were somewhat uncertain about whether un in the court being presided over by him, whether we would actually have success in having the kind of verdict which we were hoping for. However, it must be said that he was or he is a very fair person. He listened very carefully to the many different witnesses and testimonies which were given within the court and also uh, proactively himself asked many different questions uh, within the proceedings as well. In regards to our request for him to also make or for them to make a site visit to Fukushima as well, uh, although it was six months after uh, we, or we had uh, made the request and so on, he did make the decision to go on site himself as well. So I think that as Mr. Kawai said, I think that through the court proceedings, he somewhat uh, well changed as he came to learn about the situation. Thank you. I have a question uh, online from Dean Normail, correspondent of Sec Science Magazine. He asked, is it possible for Japan to meet its commitment to cut its greenhouse gas emissions to net zero by 2050 without partly relying on nuclear power? This question is rather about uh, CO2, not exactly about your case, but I hope you have an answer. Also, he asked, if Japan completely abandons nuclear power, how will it replace the use of fossil fuels like oil uh, and petrol? Thank you. 
の次オンラインで届いている質問です。サイエンスマガジンの記者からの質問です。あの訴訟に関してよりもまあ原発全般についての質問になるんですけれども、2点ほどあります。あの1つ、もし原発がなければ日本が約束している2050年までのネットゼロという削減は実現可能でしょうか、それをどういうふうに実現することができるのかというのが1点目。そして2つ目が、もし日本が原発をやめるのであれば、化石燃料などの代わりになるものはどのような形のものがふさわしいでしょうか、はい、えっと地球の温暖化を避けるために原発を使うべきだというのは全く間違った考えだと思います、えー、日本における原発の危険は国を滅ぼす急激ないわば急激な死に至る事故です、えー、他方地球温暖化というのは急激に死に至るわけではなく、また日本だけで努力できるわけではなく、えー、全人類が共同でやらなければいけない、しかも長期的な対策です。えー、いわば、緩慢な死に至る地球温暖化を防ぐために、急激な死に至る危険のある原発を動かせというのは、あの特に日本においては全く間違いです、えー。私は今の記者の方の質問に対して、えー、完全に反対です。それから原発がなければあどうするんだっていうけども、日本は原発がなくても、実際に全く原発ゼロの期間が数年ありましたけども、全く支障はありませんでしたし、これからも支障はありません。えーそして、えー、原発なしで、えー、電気を支障なく作っていくためには、あ早く方針を変えて、原発に使っている無駄なお金を全部自然エネルギーに注入すれば、必ずできます、私はそれを断言します。それからフランスの方からはよく今のような質問が多いんですが、フランスと日本がまた少し事情が違うということをご存じないと思います。日本はフランスの数十倍の率で危険な地震が頻発します。そのことも知らないで、フランスにいる感覚で私たちのことを批判するのは全く間違いであるというふうに考えます。First of all, I think that the kind of thinking that nuclear power plants are something which could or should be used in order to tackle global warming is completely wrong thinking. It is the wrong way of looking at the situation. We can see that, of course, the use of nuclear power plants in Japan is something of a very dangerous nature, as we have experienced, and indeed has the threat of causing a huge number of deaths and also, indeed,、uh, Well,、uh, having the collapse of the country itself should another severe accident occur. So, therefore, of course, global warming is something which does need to have urgent measures being taken, but this is not something, first of all, which Japan can fix by itself, and it is not something、uh, necessary with the immediate、uh, death as would happen in a severe accident. Rather, this is something which all of humanity must cooperate together and have long term measures in order to deal with as well. And so, to say, well, to prevent, for example, the deaths which could be caused by global warming by using nuclear power plants, which is also something which poses such a severe risk, is something which, especially for a country in Japan, is completely a, a wrong way of thinking or looking at the situation. So, I would say, first of all, I'm very much.、Um, Not in agreement at all with the、uh, suppositions or which are assumed in this question as well. So, then, well, what do we do without nuclear power plants in regards to this question? Actually, following the disaster, Japan actually did experience several years where it had sufficient electricity without having any nuclear power plants operating as well. There was no hindrance at that time, and that is something which, from now as well, if Japan were to make that decision, it would be possible as well. In order to have sufficient electricity、uh, without nuclear power plants, rather what is needed to, is to have a decision to change the direction of the country、uh, made as soon as possible to stop wasting these huge amounts of money on nuclear power plants and rather to shift these towards renewable energy. And I can say with complete certainty that it would be possible for Japan to、uh, go forward and have sufficient energy.、Uh, Without relying on nuclear power plants、uh, or fossils in that regard as well. 
I'm often, or we are often asked questions uh, like this uh, from French reporters, actually, or from people in France as well. And I would like to uh, emphasize that the situation in a place like France and in Japan is completely different. First of all, there is the fact that Japan uh, experiences regularly uh, many, you know, dozens of times over more uh, frequent and dangerous earthquakes than a place like uh, France, for example. So the dangers of nuclear power here in Japan are very much extreme. And so I think that uh, for such questions or to be made without having a full understanding of, of the Japanese situation and assuming that it would be the same as in other parts of the world is also a wrong assumption. Thank you. Thank you. Please go ahead. えっと、私の方からも一言言わせていただきます。え、日本にはあの、ソーラーシェアリングというですね、非常に優れたあの、え、発電のシステムが対応こう使った発電のシステムがございます。もうこちらでも何度かえ、ご案内していると思うんですけ
the crises such as we see in Ukraine or Russia about the gas pipelines, for example, or in different areas of the Middle East where if a crisis occurs, then there is issues of tankers being able to transport and so on as well. These kind of issues could also be uh, resolved by locally generated renewable energy as well. Therefore, I believe that what we need in order for Japan to be able to do this as we go into the future is a change in policy. Thank you. Just a bit. Uh, I have, uh, I have uh, received a kind of counter argument with you. Uh, it's from David McNeil. He's a FCCJ PAC member. PAC is a committee that organized this press conference. He asked, some people have revised their opinion of nuclear power and say that it's the lesser of two evils compared to climate change. They say Japan, like Germany, was too hasty, too hasty in shifting down most of its nuclear reactors. Do you accept such views? It's the same question. It's basically, but he's... Yeah, David McNeil's and the question is from the question. The content is that there are some parts of it, but there are some people who are changing the environment and changing the environment in the current situation. The environment is always good for the environment. ものではないかもしれないんですけれども、気候変動の危機に比べたら、もしかして選択せざるを得ないかもしれないというふうに考える人たちはいるということなんですけれども、でその人たちもドイツですとか日本はあのあの、早すぎる決断をされたんじゃないかというような意見もあるんですけれども、そのような意見に対しては皆さんのコメントをお願いします。あの裁判のこと離れて大変遺憾ですけれども、この質問には答えなきゃいけないと思います。えー、早すぎる決断ではなくて、遅すぎる決断だと思います、原発をやめて自然エネルギーでやっていこうと、安くて安全な自然エネルギーでやっていこうという決断が遅すぎるというふうに思います、えー、ドイツと日本が、あのあまあ、日本はそんなにあのちゃんとしたいい決断してないんですよ、そのこと知らないのかもしれません、それからドイツはいい決断をしました、それが早すぎるということは全くありません。日本について言うと、原発事故で国が滅びるということはありえますが、地球温暖化によって、この2、30年の以内に国が滅びるという危険はありません。それは私は断言します。休止するかもしれないという危険が迫っているときに、それを避けるべきことをまず避けなければいけない。まず原発を止めて、そして地球温暖化対策。気候変動対策を世界中の人たちと一緒にやることが大事です。日本の問題について絞って、絞ります、えー。日本はまず原発を絶対にやめるべきです。すぐにやめるべきです。なぜならば、明日すごい地震が来るかもしれない。日本は世界平均の130倍の率で大きな地震が発生しています。そのことは今の質問者がご存知でしょうか。私は多分知らないでそういうことを言っているんだと思う。日本は特別に危険な国なんです、あの原発について言うと。日本は原発をやってはいけない国です。えー、安全なところにいて、危険なところの人のことを、余計なことを言わないでほしい。余計なお世話だ。この国が自分たちを守るんです。私たちはこの国を守るんです。ヨーロッパの自信のないところから余計なことを言わないでください。First of all, this uh, question is getting rather off. These questions are quite off the topic of the, the topic of today's conversation about the lawsuit. Uh, so, but I, I believe that I, I still do have to respond to them. But first of all, I would say that the decisions to shift away from nuclear power are not at all too hasty. Rather, I would say they came too late. I think that if a decision had been made earlier to switch away from dangerous nuclear power to cheaper and safer renewable energy, then we would have a completely different situation. Uh, Japan, well, I wouldn't necessarily say Japan has actually made a decision anyway to move away from nuclear power, but in regards to Germany, it was a very good decision and not at all too hasty in, in anything. If anything, it could have been made earlier. Nuclear power plants, we must recognize that a nuclear power plant disaster has the potential of killing so many people immediately, has such a hugely severe risk as well. However, in, if we looked at Japan, the, the risk of the climate change, of course, while it is a significant risk, is this something which would cause 
immediate death of so many people in the next 20 years, 30 years in Japan, perhaps that's not necessarily the case. So the first thing we have to do is to avoid something which is so dangerous that it could cause this immediate death of so many people as well. And after stopping nuclear power plants, or at the same time, we need to look at what kind of measures to be taken in regards to the climate as well, cooperating with people around the world or cooperating globally uh, in order to deal with that issue as well. I would like to keep my comments specifically uh, to Japan as well, because it must be said that Japan is a country where nuclear power plants pose an even greater danger than most other countries in the world. Uh, for example, in regards to earthquakes, the number or the frequency of earthquakes here in Japan is 130 times that of the global average. Therefore, if we consider this huge risk, I think that people who could have that kind of opinion of it being the lesser of two evils, uh, just completely do not understand this risk at all and do not understand the situation that Japan is in being in this particularly dangerous situation. So people having these kind of opinions that it is the lesser of two evils or, or something that must be had, I think that this is something that perhaps they are saying it from far away, uh, you know, looking at Japan, but without actually understanding the situation of Japan and the severity of the issue as well. And therefore, I, I really do not think that it's, it's suitable, or I feel even uh, somewhat anger in regards to them asking these kind of questions or making these kinds of comments about Japan without fully understanding the situation. My name's Will Fee. I'm a news reporter at the Japan Times. I just want to say that I completely agree with Kwai Sensei as someone from the UK. Having never experienced earthquakes before I came here, it seems bizarre, given how frequently they occur, that there would be nuclear power plants here at all. Um, apologies if this question kind of reveals my own ignorance of how these cases work, but um, I just wondered if you could explain a little bit more about the rationale that damages will be paid to the corporation rather than the shareholders. Um, beyond specific executives, isn't it TEPCO as a whole who are liable for negligence at its plants? I believe Fukushima Daiichi was commissioned in 1971, so surely that predates the specific executives involved in this case. Thank you. えっと、ジャパンタイムズの記者です。まずあの質問の前に一つコメントなんですけれども、あの日本に来る前はあの地震の経験などもちろんありませんでし、これほど地震の多い国で原発っていうものが存在するっていうのも本当にま不思議と言
天文学的な損が与えてしまったという場合にも当然この制度は使える制度だというふうに、まあ、河合先生は考えたわけです。And so, this kind of、uh, case or this kind of utilization of this act is often, for example, in cases where company executives are using company assets for their own purposes, for example. And perhaps that, that kind of use of this act is in, in trials is something which is、uh, quite clear or easy to understand. But in this particular case,、uh, it was claiming that the executives did not take the safety measures which they should have, which led to huge losses.、Uh, Huge losses of the company. And so, Mr. Kawai,、uh, thinking about this, thought that perhaps this was actually a, a law which could be used、uh, in the case of bringing these、uh, people to、uh, account. The Watashiga Omoni, Konka and Hanket, no Ichiban Okina Igi, a Kaisha, Genpas, or Motil Kaisha, no Yakuin, a Handa, or Machiga, or Kaisha, a Tosan, Surkam, Shena, or no Taihena, Songai, or Atate Shima, or to you, Koto. でそのことを考えると、やっぱりすべ、えー、ての原発会社の役員は、もう原発をやめた方がいいというふうに、経営判断として考えるんではないかと、そこに一番大きな我々のやったことの、えー、意義があると思っています。And so, thinking of it from this perspective, I think that perhaps one of the largest、um, or meanings or points of significance of the verdict in this trial is that it's shown that, uh, oh, it's shown to Executives of companies who、uh, operate nuclear power plants, that if there is some kind of an accident occurring in their plants, then this is something which would incur a enormous loss enough to even make the company go bankrupt, for example. So we hope that this will mean that you know, the executives in corporations which are operating nuclear power plants will think about this from a management decision as well and make the decision to move away from nuclear power. Kawai Kara Hosoksetsu Mesimasu. Hosoksetsu Mesimasu. And I would like to add another point.、Uh, many people often think that perhaps, well, because these executives probably have various、uh, insurance measures in place and so on for their you know, accountability, then you know, they'll be fine. ところが全く違うのです、えー。彼らは役員賠償責任保険に入っていますが、原発事故関係の損害はすべて面積ということに契約上なっています。これは世界共通の現象です。And actually, but that's not the case at all. They do have liability insurance overall, and they were entering to this, these particular executives, of course. But actually,、um, and this is something which is common globally with nuclear power plant operators,、mm. when it comes to compensational liability in regards to nuclear power plants, this is not actually included. だから彼,は、えー、彼らは自分のお金で弁償しなければなりませんが、13兆円などというお金は絶対に払えません。そうすると彼らは結局、自己破産をしなければならないということになります。以上です And、uh, that means that because it's not through insurance or any kind of corporate support which will be responsible for paying the compensation which was declared, that means that it is up to them to use their own personal assets to pay. But of course, they do not have 13 trillion yen in, in personal assets.、Uh, therefore, this means that, it's like a, that they will probably have to uh, individually uh, declare bankruptcy in regards to this, just to add on as the points in regards to that. Thank you. If I may ask、uh, one more question after the end of the session. Uh, was, uh, was there any involvement by the government or METI, Ministry of Trade, Industry and、uh, Economy,、uh, in the decision taken by TEPCO executives、uh, of not taking、uh, safety countermeasures? Do, do you have any、uh, details about some、uh, government officials involved in the decision in this big file? Thank you. あの司会の方からの質問なんですけれども、あのまあ、東電の役員がその対策を取らない、何もしないというふうに決めたときに、そのときは日本政府、または経産省などの関与というものはありましたか、えー、とても難しい質問で、それ、<笑>すごく長い答えになってしまうんですけれども、えー、簡単に答えると、まあ、政府はもちろん、えー水本の長期評価が出たってことも知ってましたし、それについての対策を検討するようにということも言いました。しかし、東京電力は満足な答えをしなかった。えー、で上岸の地震についても報告をよこせというふうに言って、えー、なかなか東電も報告をしない。えー、で、えー、結果的にその東電が計算した15メートルの津波が来るという計算結果は、
、えー、地震の4日前に政府に届けられたと、まあ、そういう意味では、まあ、政府は東京電力が非常に、えー、不,不真面目というか、きちんとした対策しなかったために、対策が遅れた面はありますけれども、えー、政府は権限を持っているわけですから、この,その、えー、水保の長期強化に基づく津波対策を講じるように、えー、あの国の権限として命ずることができたはずだと、まあ、そういう論理に基づいて国に責任があるというふうに言っている高等裁判所での判決例が3つもあったんですね、でもそれを最高裁は覆してしまった、しかし、今回のこの株主代表訴訟の判決によれば、この最高裁の判決は明らかに間違っていた、あの重要な事実を見逃しているというふうに言えると思います。詳しく説明するにはこれの10倍ぐらい時間がかかります。<笑>はい um, that's a very difficult question which would actually require quite a long response, but I'll try and、uh, answer it simply. If we look into the background, for example, of course the government was aware of the different、uh, The long term assessment, which was provided by the National Headquarters for Earthquake、uh, Research Promotion, and the fact that、um, it was saying that these kind of measures should be put in place, but that TEPCO did not take sufficient measures in regards to this.、Uh, also, when we look at, for example, the situation later about the,、uh, the Joban、uh, earthquake situation, where the government was asking、uh, you know, further information, and this was not coming from TEPCO as.、Uh, Came as well. So, when we consider also the fact that, for example, the calculations that TEPCO made in regards to a, 15, a potential 15 meter tsunami,、uh, these were only actually submitted to the government four days before the, uh, uh, the disaster as well. If we consider these k i n d of facts, that it could, of course, be said that the government、uh, you know, saw that TEPCO was not you know, fulfilling or being serious enough about the various measures.、Uh, That needed to be taken and that they were being very delayed. And the government did have authority indeed to order TEPCO to take these k i n d of measures, to give these、uh, direct you know, demands or orders of the company to do this as well. And this is one of the facts which is、uh, or forms the basis for. Uh, three particular verdicts which were issued in district courts in regards to state compensation about nuclear power plant acts. However, these were things which, when they went to the High Court,、um, they were overturned. But we can see now from the verdict in this shareholders' case that this was. Uh, that verdict was ignoring many of these important facts, and these、uh, different details are coming up. But if I wanted to respond to this question properly, I would probably need about 10 times as much time as this. So I'll leave it at that. Okay, we invite you next time for only this question. Kobayashi san, this, this will be the last question. We, we have no time. フリーランスの小林と申します、えー、質問2点ございます一つはですね、えー、今回の判決によってですね、えー、他のまだ、えー、東京電力も他の,他の他社の原発も全部稼働しておりますがこれについてですねこれから反原発を掲げられている皆さん方はどういう作戦で、えー、この原発をなくそうとされているのかこういう巨大な賠償金を払えという判決が出たからにはですね他社の人たちもみんなこれにもう原発をやめるだろうというあのことかもしれませんけれども実際にはそういう動きは、まあ、今のところ出てませんよね。これれをどうされどういうふうにこ,うこれから、えー旧車についてもですね、それから東電の他の原発も動いてますので、これ、事故も起きてないのに、どうやって、えー、こう訴訟されるのかですね、えー、これ、どういう作戦を取られるのかということをお聞きしたいのが一つです。もう一点だけ、もう一点は長くなってすみません。Really, please make a chart, はい。
Uh, I'm a freelance, uh, or mostly I have two questions. The first is in regards to this particular uh, verdict uh, about what your strategy to utilize this towards the further you know, nuclear phase out uh, from now as well. Uh, for example, uh, TEPCO and the other nuclear power plant operators do still have plants which are operating, which are running in different parts of the country as well. You mentioned that you hope that perhaps they would make a, a management, management decision seeing the financial risks of such huge amounts of uh, compensation being issued, but mm, what is your overall know. strategy in order to uh, achieve the nuclear phase out utilizing this verdict. よろしいでしょうか。木村から答えさせていただきます。あの、私は東京電力の株主で株主代表、あの株主運動というのをやっているんですが、え、日本にですね、沖縄電力以外、旧電力に原発がございます。それみんな、え、30年以上前から、え、
In regards to the lawsuits, there are many different other kinds of lawsuits which are still ongoing even today as well. There are those which are seeking injunctions against particular operations of nuclear power plants, for example. The uh, shareholders derivative suit, which we spoke about today, is particularly utilizing corporate law in regards to this. But we have formed a national council of the various different groups which are involved in these different legal proceedings and so on in order to uh, share information. And the shareholders groups uh, other than TEPCO are also, for example, at shareholders uh, meetings, but also in other opportunities as well, for example, asking the position of the companies, asking their response to the verdict of this particular case as well, asking that, well, if they do go ahead with rushing the restart of particular nuclear power plants, if a severe accident were to occur, they could see similar situations where there would be such a huge financial loss incurred, sending these kind of warnings as shareholders uh, to the corporations and so on. Uh, there are many different uh, movements which are underway in regards to this. Uh, also, in um, this recent verdict, it also clearly stated a declaration of what is known as provisional execution. Uh, and so this means that uh, we, which asks then, uh, if, the, if TEPCO does not take the actions in regards to the defendants in order to execute what was decided in the verdict, then the shareholders can take it upon themselves to conduct these proceedings as well. We, as the shareholders, uh, sent a letter to TEPCO in regards to this on July the 20th. And um, at that time, there was no appeal which had been issued by the directors and so on as well. However, we received a response from TEPCO on August the 1st, which said that they, well, it was a response, but they said that they refused to respond to our, uh, our request regarding provisional execution because this was something which was under appeal still. Therefore, next, we're also looking at uh, taking this uh, to uh, the um, auditors in regards to asking for this as well. Another uh, thing which is being uh, submitted as a request from the different uh, shareholders movement as well is requesting for all directors to withdraw from nuclear power plant actions immediately or they would also have to take this kind of uh, personal responsibility in the event of any kind of accident in regards to this. Uh, so there are various different uh, measures which are going on in place represented by the different shareholders movements and the other legal proceedings which are being done as part of the movement towards the phase out from nuclear power plants. Thank you very much. I think this, yeah, go ahead. え、と今の質問に対して端的にあのお答えします。あの、私たちは既に全電力会社の代表取締役13兆円の判決出ましたよとあなた方事故が起きたらこういう支払いしなきゃいけないんですよと保険もありませんよということをはっきりと and to give another brief uh, response in regards to this, uh, we have also sent uh, warning letters to the executives of each of the uh, electric utility companies as well, saying that very clearly the content proving that, well, this verdict was just issued of 13 trillion yen. This is something that if your company were to have any kind of accident, then you could be held personally responsible for this. There is no insurance which would cover this as well. We sent this to the home addresses of the executives of each of the utility companies. And I'm sure this is something which is under quite, or becoming quite an issue within their households now as well. この朝倉判決を各差し止め裁判に提出をして、この東京地裁の会社、証事部の判決がこういうのを出ましたよと、原発事故っていうのは本当に大変なんだっていうことを前提にしてますよと、それからこういう粗末なことが現実に11年前に
your efforts uh, to uh, Kawaii-san to bring this uh, five kilos of documents here. And uh, I'm sorry I couldn't take more questions because we are squeezed for time. We are 20 minutes uh, okay. uh, more uh, over time. And uh, I appreciate your uh, coming here. Uh, thanks again, and please come again to explain more about the issue and development. Arigatou gozaimasu. Have a nice evening. Thanks.